I'm using Mold Max 60 by SmoothOn to make some silicone molds for pewter casting. Uh, the focus of this video will be tips and tricks that I've learned for producing good quality two-part molds for pewter casting. The castings I'll be working on today are for an automaton featuring little robots. I made these little patterns for robot parts using Sculpey clay. They've been cured, and so today I'm going to make a two-part mold so that I can reproduce these in pewter. So what I'm, I like to do is uh, make these boxes here, three pieces, and glue them together. And then uh, that way uh, I can put these other sides on here. I'll just tape these in place. And when I'm taking the mold apart, I can just break these sides away and I can get the mold out easily. I'm using non-hardening clay here. It can be used over and over. Uh, and what I'm doing is I'm just packing it in here around my patterns and I'm kind of running it up to what I'll call my parting line for the two-part mold. This one is pretty much where I want it. I'm just kind of making sure that uh, all the parting line areas, so uh, there's no gaps in there. I don't want to have any more pewter at the parting line than necessary. These are called registration points here. What I did is I just took the end of the Sharpie and I just jabbed it down in there. And I also use these acorn nuts. That's another way to do it. It's the same, same idea here. And so I've got a couple of them here and then I have four registration points around the perimeter of the, uh, the robot heads here. Before I pour the Mold Max, I will apply a thin layer of Vaseline all over the inside on Sculpey and everything. Uh, silicone doesn't stick to anything really other than silicone. However, it can be tough to get these things to release from the mold. So just a thin layer of Vaseline and it really helps to get that uh, cured silicone mold out of the form. I've made a couple other videos on mixing the mold max, so I'm not gonna go over that here. This is a, a double time pour sequence and you see that I'm pouring not directly onto my patterns but around the edges and I just let the mold max kind of flow over the top of the molds. It does a little bit better of picking up the details that way. So this is the first one being done and uh, switching over to the second one using the same technique. And I'll cover over my patterns by about a quarter of an inch to make sure I have a nice stiff mold. Well, one thing I, I mentioned, these are hair bands here and they're perfect keep pressure. You have those two loose sides that are just taped. Put that hairband around it and it really holds everything together very nicely. When I left last evening these were already solid after only two or three hours so uh, these are going to be more than set so just take these apart see what we got. Pull the tailgate off. Pull the outside one off. See it just pops right off of there uh, when you uh, lubricate this a little bit. And let's see if we can get the mold apart. Sometimes the mold will stick to itself if, if I didn't have Vaseline all over it, but we'll pull it out. And it looks good. So now that um, I've got the two pieces, I can kind of show the registration points, what those do for you. So when I go to pour this, um, these little notches will help the uh, two parts of the mold uh, stay in the exact right place so that the two little parts that I cast are as accurate as possible. So I'm ready to clean this thing up and do a pour. But uh, first I'm going to put my sprues in uh, and vent so that uh, I can uh, get a good pour on these. Just a word about venting and cutting your sprues. Uh, let's say these are the two pieces I'm going to put in the mold. Uh, I'm going to cut a sprue which is going to be like a little funnel like this. Something like that. And when I pour the hot metal in here it'll go into this little funnel and fill this up. But you have to think like air and water. Uh, if you did this with water this would get locked up because the air that's trapped in here has to have a way to get out. So what I will do is I'm also going to cut a couple of very small little vents on each one of these. So this will be the sprue on this one, something like that. And then I will cut a little channel like this. 
And so when the metal is going in and it blocks this hole, as the metal is entering the mold like this, the air has a place to escape like that. So the air will go in, will come out this location right here. So what does that look like? I'm just using a single edge razor to cut my sprues in here. And uh, so what I'll do is I'll just cut a little channel like this and just, you know, maybe three sixteenths of an inch opening, something like that. And you can make it bigger, but the bigger you make it, the more cleanup you have to do uh, when you do your pouring. So uh, I'll just cut a little channel. And then what I'll do is uh, I'll widen this here. I'll just kind of cut a deep V like that. And then another one like that. And so when I put these two pieces together like this, that's where I'll pour the pewter. So now I've got to make a vent so hole. I'll just cut a little notch over here on the side like that. And you can kind of spread the silicone to see where your cut is so that you don't make your vents any bigger than necessary. So that vent, I don't know how big it is, but it's probably not more than a sixteenth of an inch in diameter. The air does not need much of a passage to uh, to be for this to be a good vent. So there's my sprues, one, two, and there's my vents, one, two, right there. Now I'm also going to widen the sprue. When you pour the metal, you're going to want to have a nice target. So I've drawn a little line here on the other side. Now this I'm not going to connect uh, to the sculpture itself, but I am going to just notch this out and that will make for a bigger pour spout for the pewter. The more the, the more pour spout size you have, the less you're gonna spill when you're pouring. And it's not fun to, to spill molten metal, even if it's just good old pewter. Okay, so now you put these together like this, and I've got some pretty nice little target holes there for my metal. See you over at the casting table. Somebody suggested one time that if I wanted to get uh, better quality castings, just to put a little bit of baby powder uh, inside the mold. And um, I was having some real trouble uh, when I started doing this, getting good quality. So I bought a $2 thing of baby powder. It may just be a coincidence, but uh, since I've been doing this, I've been getting a lot better quality uh, molds. Now you can see that um, I just took my little box that I created the mold in and it makes a nice little backer. So this one I just gently squeeze in the vise just out of convenience. It doesn't need to be in a vise. And uh, this one uh, put it together and I'll just use this little box right here. Same box that I made the mold in and I'll put this piece of plywood here on it. It is, uh, looks pretty melty. I'm going to pull off the dross and go ahead and do the pour. I might need a bigger vent on that one. It took three or four little gulps to get it all. Yeah, my sprue is just a little bit choked, I think. So I'll probably increase the sprue size just a little bit. When this stuff uh, crosses over, it, it means that it's pretty much set. So take it apart here. I don't touch the metal until I have to. And That's an incomplete pour right there, and I did not have a big enough vent hole, so I'm gonna make another vent hole. Actually, the sprue was a little tight on this. It looks like the, the metal uh, crystallized before the mold was full, so that's an unsuccessful pour, and we'll try it again. Try the other one. So I usually have to do one or two pours on these before I get the, the sprue and the vent just right. Okay, so there's another incomplete one there. But this one came out really nice. So I'll increase the sprue size there. And that one looks pretty good. 
So I got one out of four. <laughs> a little more work on the vents and we'll try it again. Took a minute and uh, increased the sprue sizes and also the vent sizes a little bit. So the metal should flow a little bit better this time. All right, round two is complete. And drum roll. Oh, those are nice pours right there. Oh, that's nice. That's a kind of a skull head. It's gonna be part of a robot. And this is another robot. This is the second pour I'm doing with this one. And And that one looks really, really good. I'm very happy with that one. So I got the sprues and the vents right on that one. So here's the one I'm nervous about. I've got one in here that's kind of a large volume and it was fighting me a little bit on that last pour. I don't like it when the metal doesn't all go in at once. So let's see what we have here. Well, this is the big one, and it looks pretty darn good. Let's head over to the other table and clean these up and see where we're, we're headed. So here's what they look like coming out of the mold. They'll have, uh, like this is a little uh, piece from the vent here sticking up, and just snip it off, save the little pieces, because I can melt that later. Uh, this is a robot body here, and uh, I just snip off the sprue and save that. It's a nice little piece of metal. And I'll just go around and trim the excess flash. And then from there, I'll go to uh, sanding and steel wool and, and I'll polish on my rag wheel. And so this is kind of where we end up here. Uh, I've got uh, some robot heads here. And uh, so I've got, a, this is a body and I previously did some arms and I'm working on some legs here. So here's a kind of a skeleton head. Here's one that looks a little more like a Tasmanian devil or something. And then this one here has four eyeballs and uh, you can rotate around. I'll end up adding some glass eyes to these, <clears throat> kind of like on this one here. And so I've left insets so that I can take these glass eyes and put them in here. And that really, I think, will add a lot of personality to these. So be sure and uh, tune in to my next video. I'm gonna be finishing up all the pieces parts to these and I'll be drilling them out and getting linkages set up for the arms and legs so that uh, I can put some motion to these. Thanks for watching.